thing is, if any Lukia player was prepared for Mew with Aerodactyl, <laughs> it's going to be Isaiah Bradner. He, he probably has to play against this deck way more than he wants to because of Xander. And go ahead and take a look at those accomplishments. I mean, this is just uh, the 2022-23. Look at this. EUIC top eight, NAIC finalist. The uh, in, uh, Indianapolis Regionals finalist, that was over a thousand players. And sure enough, in uh, Toronto had that top eight finish too. So the guy just doesn't miss. Yeah, uh, well, missing the first a little bit on those. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Again, playing that Lugia V-Star deck. Same 60 as two of the other players in this top eight. Let's go ahead and take a look over at Grant. We've been mentioning that Mew VMAX with that Aerodactyl V-Star also playing that Leafy Camo Poncho. I knew this card was going to be good, Kyle. I just knew it. <sighs> Who did you tell? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm going to need to see that written down somewhere. Uh, looking over at Grant, the accomplishments. Uh, 2020 Dallas Regionals Top 8, Collinsville Top 8 as well. Uh, Secaucus, the Top 16, and DC Open Top 8 too. So has been around for a while and has some solid results, but definitely has an opportunity here to make his best one yet. And definitely is in the position to do it. Like uh, Chip said, it's really going to rely on that coin flip. You know what? We saw the coin flip, and uh, there was a lot of emotion <laughs> on Isaiah's face. I don't know if it was good or bad, but he looked out to the crowd as it was happening. Oh. Uh, I think we will we'll find out soon enough, but that is an absolutely crucial flip. Uh, as we were saying, the Aerodactyl V-Star, getting that Ancient Star out before Summoning Star, is, uh, that is a good way to beat Lugia. Now, if the Poncho gets on that Aerodactyl V-Star, there is still some avenue for Isaiah to get rid of it, right? Yeah, uh, we, we do know that this list is featuring two of those lost vacuums, which uh, I think John was saying are actually not good. He would he would replace them, but uh, you know this is the matchup where you're, you you could actually see them uh, doing some work. So maybe there's an opportunity down the road there. Looking at the prizes, nothing too big. I guess two choice belt and two research for Isaiah there. And we see the Mew VMAX on the other side. And a couple of those quick ball, nothing to uh, to worry about there. A little, some of the switching effects too, but I think Grant will be able to give us a great game here. Very excited to see who's going to be going first here. Isaiah <laughs> pumping himself up, maybe pumping up the crowd. Who knows at this point? But we're ready for some Pokemon. There is the handshake, and it does look like Isaiah is going to be starting things you gotta, off. You yeah. got to take a note to let you know that you went first. <laughs> that's, uh, that's how we start things off, of course. Oh. Lugia V in the hand. Again, that's where you want to be. Get that in play, then you can V star the next turn, get that summoning star. Starting the, the Raikou, though. Yeah, Raikou in the active spot there uh, with the Aurora Energy. Let's see if this can discard something nice. You know, hey, probably nice. the best card to discard there. <laughs> and uh, the rest of the hand. We see Evolution Incense. I think multiple of those. So certainly Lugia V-Star on the horizon. Got to outpace oh, via the Aerodactyl. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, well, there was a pass of the turn from Isaiah, and Grant starts things off. Genesect V on the bench and just the Judge. Yeah, that's uh, when you're calling for Judge this early, someone either messed up or uh, needs to get lucky. And we're going to see if Grant can find some Pokemon here or maybe one of those battle VIP passes because this bench is uh, not nearly big enough to start combating what Isaiah is going to do next turn. Granted, we still don't know. Uh, Judge can disrupt, and we've seen Marnie do plenty of disruption in these three matches so far. Yeah, do not go to her party. <laughs> Love seeing that old school art on the judge there. Takes me back to going 0 and 4 at Worlds. <laughs> we all can't be like you, Kyle. <laughs> wow, <laughs> battle VIP pass off the four cards here. This will be able to grab the Aerodactyl if Grant chooses, or you just go more Fusion Strike Pokemon, try to draw some cards. I've given up on Aerodactyl at this point. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as your opponent goes first, you, you say, well, maybe maybe you can help me out in uh, game two, little buddy. And looking at the Genesect V there, potentially the Mew as well. Get things rolling. Of course, get a good feel for all those counts right now, but eventually it is going to be a lot of Fusion Strike system. Trying to draw this hand up and... Uh, I always say the magic number is 10 cards in the discard pile to feel like you had a good Mew turn. Let's see how many we end up with. So far, we're at two. 
and we're going to draw one. I want to see a little more than one. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if it's two cards in hand or three. Yeah, this is a uh, maybe a little bit of luck is going to be required. Ultra Ball going to be the more consistent approach as opposed to the Cramomatic. Well, you don't want to flip a coin to try <laughs> to get the Pokemon to find the Battle <laughs> VIP pass and get two Pokemon, Jeremy. Looks like Grant is opting for the second Mew V. Now on the bench, you can draw up to five cards with that Fusion Strike system from Genesect. And this is where you kind of get things going a little bit. Yep, this is certainly a solid start here. Or Corio in the active spot. It's decent. Uh, it's not exactly the Pokemon that you want to see right now, but uh, honestly, Ooh. anything that is just a single prize when your opponent's probably trying to work in the Lugia V-Star next turn uh, seems like a, a solid Pokemon to lose early. Double battle VIP pass and a Kramomatic in hand off of that Genesect. So Grant has the option to go get another Genesect or that Aerodactyl maybe even Chromatic discarding, finding a path to the peak or something. Yep, Grant of the sort. checked the discard pile. Said, "Oh, it's it's just the just the Archaeops. Okay, well, uh, we'll we'll take that risk then. See if uh, this Aerodactyl can pay off." Speaking of risks, Chromatic, uh, I guess that missed because we're we're just shuffling up now. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not a bad turn. I think, what, seven, eight cards in the discard? Yeah, so. and you put a little bit of pressure on, too, with the, with the Aerodactyl benching. It's, it's not too worrisome to have that Pokemon down early. We did mention that you can just put the Camo Poncho on if you, if you want to be protected later on and not give up those prize cards. Evolution Incense to start things off for Isaiah. This is going to be his first deck search, so I'm going to take a little bit of time to figure out what is actually prized and what resources you have available to you. And depending on the other four cards in hand, we could see a typical Lugia turn two play. Yep. Supporter of choice this turn is also something that could be interesting. We did see Grant go with the two Mew and the two Genesect. So perhaps if there was all of the resources there and a potential gusting effect to go along with uh, a big Lugia V-Star play, we could see a good understanding of what Isaiah is really going for in this matchup. Does he does he value getting rid of some of the draw and those Genesects, or does he want to go straight for uh, the throat there of the Mu V and try to get rid of all the attacking power? Lugia V Star seems to be the choice from this evolution incense. Could kind of signal that Isaiah has something like a professor's research in hand, uh, with maybe another Archaeops. That would be the that'd be the dream. Grant just goes ahead and pushes his hand over to show that oh it's just it's just two measly cards. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't nearly be as good as you're you're anticipating, right? Definitely uh, makes you makes you wonder. Now this will be able to find what looks like that primate wisdom Oranguru being able to just manipulate the top of the deck a little bit. Uh, granted, this is why. Uh, Mew has adopted Judge in their deck is to try to play around Primate Wisdom. Yep, we don't see any copies of the Marnie in Grant's list, it looks like. So it's just going to be those three Judge. Uh, so Oranguru is mainly going to be for assisting with the resources that may have uh, ended up in the hand that you don't want, those extra special energy cards that maybe you need on a specific turn. You can go ahead and put those back or... Uh, if you don't think that your your deck is going to be manipulated, you can put one of those resources on top. Maybe one of those turns where your opponent's probably going to boss. It's going to be interesting to see what is left in the hand for Isaiah, though. Three cards off of that judge. Yeah, we have not seen uh, Luminion yet at this point. Or oh, four, actually. Yeah. Looks like we do see the Evolution Incense in hand. Going to go ahead and use that Orangaroo. Evolution Incense going to grab that second Archaeops. And now this is where things are looking good. You, you basically got your setup. You have that Lugia V-Star in hand. And as long as you can get this other Archaeops in the discard, things are going to start rolling. You can attack with that Raikou and knock out the Oricorio and get some damage set up on possibly a Mew. 
Yeah, it's, it's certainly relevant damage as well because uh, it could lean into a big knockout without, ha without having to use uh, the Amazing Rare Evital uh, early on, and that's just so many resources. So sure enough, Isaiah is going to drop that Lugia V-Star. Oh. Summoning Star, both of those. No, just the one Ooh. did not have a way to get the second one in the discard. Wow. Yeah, that's actually huge here. Going to have to just go with the solo. This means no supporter in hand. Just, I mean, this is the threat that uh, the Aerodactyl V brings. You, you see that Pokemon down early, and you understand that it's it's not too difficult for Grant to be able to get that Pokemon out and going and uh, use the Ancient Star there. So This could kind of spell disaster for Isaiah here. Uh, the Mew deck does have access to two copies of Boss's Orders. So if we see that with the, wow, Mew, VMAX, and Double Turbo Energy in hand, these Genesex are going to be big, drawing up to five. We see a Cramomatic, couple stadiums. Yep, Cramomatic could certainly help out in pushing some aggression here. This deck isn't typically known for that as uh, the way that Grant has built it. He does focus a little more on the defensive style, has that uh, big charm there. Of course, wants to protect some Pokemon with that uh, leafy camo poncho. So getting big knockouts on the Lugia are a little tricky, but of course, this is Mew. You can draw 20 cards. Yeah. Well, maybe like 18 because of the Aerodactyl. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll cap it. <laughs> <laughs> Chromatic discards that Palpad Tails, but hey, you can use that other Genesect to draw a brand new hand of five here, needing a way to get out of the active, potentially that boss's orders. Yep, a little unlucky there with the Chromatics, but you have to love this position here. Your opponent only got down that one Archaeops. If you can find a way to even target down the Archaeops and remove that from play, boss's orders and a switch would be pretty fantastic. This is going to be the last chance for Grant to draw as well, so a big five cards here. Boss's, boss's orders, orders, but no way to get out of the active spot. And this is probably worst news for oh. Grant here. So close. There were a bunch of options there that could have helped out there. The Forest Seal Stone is still uh, a card in the list. There's no V-Star used just yet, as Aerodactyl wasn't necessary. Just has to pass the turnover. Isaiah loves that. He's going to have to make use of this Archaeops while he can. Energies need to come down soon. This is the point where Isaiah's like, oh, I should have waited. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see how he feels. This is, <laughs> this is certainly going to be an, uh, an uphill battle regardless. Yeah. It was awkward enough that this had to happen, but you're going to have to start telegraphing at this point. Uh, any of your attacks that you want to perform, uh, especially over three energies, they need to come down early, so if you're going to get the Amazing Rare Evital at some point, you're going to have to get an energy down on that soon. Well, here is the Primal Turbo to the active, so we're going to see an amazing shot this turn, being able to take a knockout on the Oracorio and get that damage somewhere. Yep, the fact that Grant had to play down the Mew uh, VMAX with the double turbo as well, means that you know which Pokemon he's already focused on as the main attacker. You could get the, the amazing shot damage on that one already. And uh, that lines up fairly well with that Lugia V-Star waiting on the bench. I kind of don't like taking the KO on the Oracorio. Uh, Do we have other options? <laughs> I, I have no idea, but if there is a boss's orders or Serena in hand for Isaiah, this amazing shot could do some incremental damage. Yeah, there's there is certainly an opportunity there. This is uh, oh, no. just going to be the, the single prize there on the Oracorio. But when you start to think about the math here, you take the one, you get three against the Mew VMAX, and then you're just a, a Genesec knockout away from closing this out. And, and Lost, City. Lost City, yep. Get the, get the Lost Zone counter ready. You're not allowed to Silene back that Oracorio. You know, you know that Grant wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, oh, yes, he didn't notice. <laughs> Genesect V on the bench now for Grant. So has three opportunities to draw with Fusion Strike system this turn. See the lost vacuum. That could just be a way to empty out the hand. Uh, granted, you'd want to use that on something like a choice belt from your opponent. But when you got to use it, you got to use it. We're going to see the boss's orders target down that Lugia. Has one power tablet. He's going to need uh, two more of those. I don't think we see the V-Guard 
uh, featured here. No, just too powerful to capture energy. There's the first fusion strike system drawing another lost city. And a double turbo energy, so you at least get to play that. And yeah, we're going to see the, the lost cities go to the lost zone, where, where they belong. <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense. Ooh, I think we did Ooh. see another power tablet. Maybe some more cards it, that could be played with that Ultra Ball. Yeah, discarding another Ultra Ball and a Mew V that could not be played. Going to probably fetch out that Mew V Max, but it does shut off the ability for a Psychic Leap later on. Yeah, we're going to be committed to these Pokemon to close things out. This is helpful as uh, you do want to protect the hit points. Uh, losing that Mew V could have been uh, pretty unfortunate. You've already committed that double turbo energy, and now we do see that Pokemon down. So 310 hit points, two big three prize Pokemon. One more power tablet. It's going to be required to hit the magical 280 here. Well, here is four cards off the top with the last Fusion Strike system. Last turn wasn't able to do it, but oh, does what? not look like Grant has the capability to find that last power tablet. Aerodactyl, why you know Fusion? <laughs> Big Charm on the bench. Yeah, Leafy, Camo, Poncho making an appearance in top eight. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some laughter going on. But yeah, that's, uh, that is one way to use it. You can avoid the boss's orders, I suppose, there and uh, try to preserve that Pokemon for a little longer. And the Big Charm on this uh, Mew VMAX definitely is looking good when you only see one Archeops down. It means you're probably not going to run into a knockout soon. Especially with the two Aurora energy on that Raikou. Now it is up to Isaiah to try to figure out a game plan. You need to get through two more Pokemon, preferably that Mew VMAX and a Genesect V or that Aerodactyl like you were saying. Can you do it though? Like Charizard's gonna be your best bet. Yep, we'll see. There, no this. prize cards taken right now, so it is full value. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Isaiah's going to continue to just get some energies onto the board. It's pretty unbelievable how many of these have stuck around. Just prize <laughs> cards are not being taken from Grant's side. Oh, we do see the V-Guard energy in the deck. So it was an option, possibly, uh, the turn prior. But, you know, Isaiah just knew Grant was going to whiff. Well, that makes this other Lugia really strong, doesn't it, now? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's funny to see that this is the situation that we're in right now, where both these players with these powerhouse decks are not taking knockouts, just damage all over the board. It feels like old-school Pokemon once again. Hey, you love to see it. Now the double turbo energy and powerful colorless energy are put on that Lugia V, and I think we're going to see that Professor's Research. Brand new hand of seven for Isaiah here. Discard, nothing really important. Went ahead and already used that Primal Turbo, so doesn't have to worry about hitting those energies. Hopefully finds some solid resources to continue the turn here, but we'll see what the, uh, the plan of action is here. Do you attack directly into this Mew VMAX? Is there another strategy where you work in that Raikou? I think that getting a lot of damage down onto this Mew VMAX does make a fair amount of sense. The Lugia V-Star is dealing 260 damage thanks to both of those powerful colorless energy. So it will be enough to kind of clean up later with an amazing shot. Ultra Ball here does discard a third Aurora energy. So those colored energy are going to be pretty taxed as we get to late game. Yeah, this is almost a concession of uh, Amazing Ray Evital has no opportunity. It would be wildly telegraphed at this point in the game. So as long as you just have that old final colored energy for the Radiant Charizard, that's likely going to be the path to victory. Second Lugia V-Star on the bench for Isaiah now. So two attackers essentially charged up thanks to this one Archeops. Uh, had plenty of time to get through the deck with Primal Turbo. And now you just... Put some damage on that Mew. Giddy up. Yeehaw. <laughs> Isaiah, of course, going to take his time here. Have to make sure you're playing around all potential options. 
I don't see anything terribly punishing here. Your opponent is going to have to promote a Pokemon, uh, or at least use a switching effect if they want to attack into this Lugia. It's going to be pretty inefficient, as it's only, they only need to deal 30 damage. So it should be one of these big three prize Pokemon in the active spot to close the turn. And uh, with that Raikou there, you have to think that it's going to be pretty easy to take some more prizes and maybe close the game out in two turns. Grant draws for the turn. Now doing some math in the head. Usually where math takes place. <laughs> I trust my gut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll see what strategy lines up here. It's tricky. Oh. Yep, that's the strategy. Yep. I think that's the one I was going to go with, too. It's, it just doesn't line up when you have that many pips of the die out on the field. Yeah, it was all about missing that switch on turn two to take the KO and had basically everything. And unfortunately, the cards did not lie the way that Grant needed them to. Yeah, and, uh, and shout out to Isaiah for understanding the situation. Said, uh, so I'm gonna have to go solo Archaeops and give it a shot. And if it didn't stick around, I was already gonna get bossed out of the game anyways. So uh, understood the situation there and uh, took a line that a lot of players probably avoid. It's, it's You might say, you know what, go ahead, get the Aerodactyl, make it happen. If you do, you win. And, uh, and now is uh, already up one game here with uh, not too much time passing. Yeah, uh, players do have 75 minutes for top cut. So n enough time and still plenty of time left, over 50 minutes now. And honestly, I want to go back to not even the turn where the switch out was missed, but the next turn. Grant chose to boss his orders, the Lugia, and go for the triple power tablet. Yep. Is there any avenue where you boss his orders that Archaeops? I thought about it. Yep. Yeah, I could definitely see that being a strategy where you just you, you take the the engine room and uh, sure enough, you you know exactly what you're playing against at that point. It's going to be only that Lugia and that Raikou. And you have a lot more time in, in that situation to go and find the power tablets, make that final uh, aggressive push. And you also have an additional prize card in your hand. So maybe that helps out too. So mm -hmm. uh, I could see merit to that play. I'm excited to see what Grant has for us in game number two going first, because that means that there is an opportunity for this Aerodactyl V and eventual uh, V star to uh, lock out this summoning star. And that maybe you don't need any cards to go along with that combo. <laughs> yeah, the thing that is big, though, is Isaiah was able to go first, get the win. So heaven forbid the, the ancient star comes down turn, turn two, Grant has uh, a field day. Well, you go to game three. Isaiah at least gets to go first. Yes, and uh, and that's why that's why going first is so important. I don't think the players are even concerned about game one. They're already thinking, oh, good, game three. I'm gonna be set. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I could mentally overcome that if, if if I was in that position and had to work all the way through game two and then have to deal with that. Looks like one mulligan from Grant here. Meanwhile, looking at Isaiah's prize cards, got a boss's orders, Marnie. Minion. Yeah, one of those two lost vacuums that we mentioned could have been uh, relevant potentially with that uh, leafy camo poncho. And Isaiah is going to get some additional pri uh, cards into the hand here with these mulligans. Grant has given two mulligans already. And <laughs> there's nothing you can do but grin and hope that you see a Pokemon named Aerodactyl soon. <laughs> <laughs> and that was such a scary start, too, from Grant. Uh, really just had to rely off that judge, was able to get there, but then after that, nothing. Yeah, it, it, it feels really awkward when you get your opening hand and you only make use of three cards. You, you, you played two Pokemon down, you used a judge, and usually you want to get a little more value from that, and that's where I was speaking to just playing down those cards. When you get 10 in the discard pile, it feels like you already had an accomplished turn. There's almost no way to do that when you just start with a judge. Path to the peak in the prizes Ooh. to Mew V and one of the two bosses orders, I believe. Uh, could yep. be a little bit bad. Yep, two bosses orders in the list for Mew, of course, so only two of those are going to be available. But if Isaiah did go for a strategy where you, you go after the, uh, the attacking power of this deck, when you're only down to one Mew, that can be really bad. Grant going to start things off with an Ultra Ball Discards Judge and the Oracorio. He's going to look for that Aerodactyl V-Star line. Try to get it set up. 
Granted, still need to get some Fusion Strike Pokemon in play to draw some cards. And uh, interesting enough, had the option to start the Oracorio, went with Genesect. Okay, well, might just be a nod to the fact that he didn't feel comfortable with the two Genesect V in play on the, the last game. It has an opportunity now to go three Genesect, two Mew, and that Aerodactyl V, and maybe draw into a couple more resources, because he really could have been a, a, a card away last time. Hand is looking pretty stellar here from Grant. Quick Balls discard the four, Seal Stone. Yep. So now that's going to grab the Aerodactyl, it looks like, maybe. Yeah, uh, when you see the discard of the four, Seal Stone, that almost guarantees that you know where your V-Star is going, and uh, Aerodactyl is going to come down there, and Isaiah says, oh boy, <laughs> it's uh, me and Manaphy against the world. And then the cards left over, that Big Charm, and a Rotom Phone. So even though you're going to draw two cards off this Fusion Strike system, you can Rotom Phone. Did you find a Battle VIP pass? Good card. Yeah. Well, we'll see what cards are found here. Obviously, so many great ones to see off the top here. I don't like any of those. Well, I think, I, I think a, it was a Mew. I think it's a Mew. I, that, that's fine. It's half a Battle VIP pass. <laughs> but it, hey, look at this. Look at all those cards in the discard pile. That's, uh, <laughs> this is, this is almost yeah. a good turn. Well, it's not over yet, Kyle. That card gets put on the top of the deck, but Fusion Strike System will draw it along with one other card. Oh, okay, All found right. the Quick Ball. That, that's basically a, a battle VIP pass. Yeah. This turn will continue. Ultra Ball as well, so you can Quick Ball, discard another Quick Ball, <laughs> find uh, Mew or Genesect, probably the Genesect so you can draw some cards here, and then you have that Ultra Ball for next turn for the V-Star. Exactly, yeah. Finding the Genesect here is going to be okay, because generally you're thinking, well, I need two Mews, right? Well, your opponent's not going to get a knockout on the opening turn. You can always grab that Mew V later on, so go ahead and continue to draw some cards here with the Fusion Strike system. You've got that Ultra Ball to follow up on the Aerodactyl V and uh, get that, get that V-Star rolling. You're just looking for an energy and a switch at this point, and... Uh, those cards could probably be found shortly. Isaiah fixing uh, Grant's Genesect from Paralyzed to just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> North, Northwest, where, where are we going? <laughs> now that four card hand for Grant here. Kramomatic. So certainly an opportunity here for a turn two Archaeops, uh, Aerodactyl Vsar, excuse me. Isaiah going to start things off like most Lugia players do. Evolution Incense. Now going to get all those cards sorted, trying to figure out what is in the prize cards. And he's going to notice a couple, couple belts. Well, we'll see what else uh, Isaiah is able to, to come up with on this opening turn. You see the, Aer the, uh, the Aerodactyl down now, and you know that it's, it's almost inevitable that you're going to be in an awkward position. So maybe you just start at attaching energies onto a Pokemon that could maybe uh, start to combat that. It's just going to take so long. And uh, <laughs> yeah. you're not going to have an opportunity like that. You almost know uh, that the game will close out soon. So maybe that changes your strategy, and you just pretend it's not there and go for the summoning star anyways. <laughs> what else can you do at that point? Probably scoop and go into game three. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we mentioned uh, how awkward it can be, especially in, uh, in Arlington for Connor Fenton playing against the Aerodactyl. Uh, you know the game's going to be over within the first couple turns just based on uh, if that Aerodactyl V, uh, v Star comes into play and gets the job done. And sure enough, it didn't that, and we saw a 15 minute finals. So uh, Isaiah may have a great understanding of, of that. And this looks like an incredible opener here. But, yeah, but if Isaiah was going first, this yeah. game is over. Yes, <laughs> but, but he, he can't even feel good about this right now because uh, there is a, uh, there's a, 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 a fighting Pokemon on the other side that we're scared of. Like, I don't even think Isaiah is going to use a supporter for this turn. Uh, <laughs> the hand is energies, that V star, and <laughs> yeah, it, completely different game if Isaiah <laughs> goes first. But Grant was lost that game one, so you get to choose and now you get to see that game plan in action. Yeah, but just thinking about any potential way to slow this down, trying to bring up a different Pokemon doesn't really make sense. Uh, you can always go with hand manipulation if you think that your opponent is sitting on some good cards, but other than that, really, it's uh, just got to hope and pray. 
Luminion V is the grab for Isaiah, so we will see a supporter this turn if he chooses. Yeah, Might as well play it down now. You can't use it if the... <laughs> well, if we're, we've already decided comes. we're just going to concede, right? So uh, <laughs> in, in that line of play, you hold the Luminion, and uh, you just grab the, the boss's orders or the Serena uh, with, after you use Summoning Star, and the game ends. It's going to be perfect. Yeah, you got to get through that big charm on that Aerodactyl V, but hey, it's not the, it's not the poncho, so you That's can true. boss it up. Yep, I see you. Second Lugia V on the bench for Isaiah now, thanks to that capture energy. Of course, and if anyone knows how to play this matchup, it's going to be Isaiah. This is so tricky. <laughs> He's really just hoping that he could see the cards in Grant's hand and say, all right, man, <laughs> do, do, do you have it or what? You want to play with hands face up, like. right? Yeah, let's let's act like we're back at league. It's gonna be interesting to see if Isaiah decides to commit that Luminion. And I love no. this. Yeah, yeah. I think you just pretend it's not there until next turn, and then next turn you look and you wake up and go, oh, "That's a that's a big bad guy. I need to get rid of him." Ultra Ball will be the first card played for Grant here this turn too. That. Aerodactyl V-Star is going to hit the hand and eventually the board. Yep. Chromatic also still available in the hand. Not sure if the item card is there to go along with it, but you have to think if that hits heads, uh, it's, it's all going to be sealed. Here's oh. a big Chromatic flip. Tails. Um, all right, we lucky. need to find the escape rope or switch. There's three copies total. You still have a ton of draws left. Not used that Genesect V yet. So Isaiah's definitely sweating a little bit. You can <laughs> Don't see. Don't do it. Just can't really stand still. Like, all right, what, what do I do with my hands? Yep. Grant also <laughs> needing to find that energy as well to go along with it. It is just the four double turbo energy, too. So I uh, have to consider that as well as we look through. Do see the energy. Another Kramomatic. And another way to discard it. It's going to be Tails oh. again. Five is not Grant's you number. You have to attach the energy. You have to commit at this point. We're going for four more cards. Another cram of mat. <laughs> He's going to have to try again. Oh! He got it. <laughs> Huge flip there. Third, Third times time. the charm. And there you see the switch brought to the front. Oh. We are going to have an ancient star here from the Mew VMAX deck. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't feel okay to say, but here we are. And yes, absolutely crucial. You know you get to hide that information, but everyone <laughs> and their grandma knows what that card is. Yeah, the card's been out for as long as Pokemon has been a card game. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Oh, no, he got... Oh, the oh escape room. sneaky. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't think that it matters too much. Let's go ahead and send up that free retreater. I think we have a, a judge follow-up as well. And uh, oh, you can't draw brutal. it up much better than that. A picture perfect turn two here from Grant. What he was trying to do last last game, essentially, uh, but with just, you know, attacking the Archeops in play. Isaiah flinched, and it actually ended up working for him. And he went with the, the solo Archeops. And this time it's going to be Nolo Archeops, because you are, you're not going to get that rolling. What is this, VGC? I didn't know we had fake out. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> This has been an insane turn from Grant here. And I think it's just top it off the fact that the three Kramomatics. That, that, is, that is exactly what we're looking for. Four cards off this judge. Two double oh turbo lost gosh, city and the Mew. Mew. All right. Well, let's draw a couple more cards here. Fusion Strike System number three. We got the poncho. Oh, Isaiah's already stretching the back thinking about game three. <laughs> <laughs> this is a scary spot. As a Ancient star this, from Aerodactyl V-Star. This Pokemon now reads that uh, <laughs> your abilities are, uh, are not there. We, you're not going to get anything done. And uh, at least it doesn't have the, uh, the poncho to go along with it right now. But everything's going to be telegraphed from this point forward. Quick ball to start things off for Isaiah, trying to just mount this comeback. And the reason why Aerodactyl V-Star is so powerful is it shuts off your opponent's Pokemon Vs. It's a one-sided path to the peak, essentially, right? Right. Uh, but it's only useful 
if you get it out before Summoning Star. Yep, and it, it feels like wasted cards in a, a lot of matchups and a lot of time and a lot of games, even when it is a good matchup, just because of uh, the way that the coin flips and having to switch between players. But and it, it works sometimes when your opponent just doesn't draw too hot, and it works fantastically when you go first. No, vacuum the big charm. He's opening <laughs> it up. He's no, making the, the ponchos on the Mew. <laughs> oh, unfortunate. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's hiding up there. <laughs> he actually is doing a pretty good job of hiding with the camo. Yeah. Uh, well done, Mew. <laughs> Taking a little bit too literally. But <laughs> doesn't even work yet. It has no effect until the VMAX comes down. That's true. You know what? But you do look stylish. It is all about the fashion here. We're reading weekend. the wind. This is uh, the hope and a prayer that your opponent just doesn't have an energy. And uh, we know that Grant is holding on to two of them right now. So... Certainly going to be some pressure placed on this Lugia. We're only a power tablet away from the knockout at this point, and that would seal it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Grant did have to go through two power tablets with those Chromomatics last turn, so only has two left in the deck. Uh, looking at the prize cards, none there, so we're all right. Double Turbo Energy on that Mew. First Fusion Strike system for four cards. Just that two retreat cost on the air deck. Power oh. tablet found. Wow. Must be nice. <laughs> I tried to use the Genesect V, and uh, I think uh, I think that power tablet's a little more efficient. It's going to line up very well here. Take the knockout on that Lugia. If oh. I'm Isaiah, I'm not sitting through any more fusion right, strike systems. I'm, I'm we going got, to. We got a we got a Drapion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. I don't even think that matters at this point either. It's a it's a long haul. All right, that Lugia V with the two energies taken down. Isaiah's going to have to start from the ground up, try to get an attacker. Maybe we're going to see uh, a, a rain splash, Tw 20 damage, go pop, pop. <laughs> <laughs> it's just bop, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not even that. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't even think that uh, you feel that in the camo poncho. <laughs> it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really show up. At this point, I think Isaiah's just trying to get information, and uh, maybe Grant will play down some additional cards here. Uh, you can try to lock up that Aerodactyl V-Star. Unfortunately, your opponent plays cards in their deck, so that's not going to work. Darn. Quick ball. Discards Luminion V for Isaiah. We'll find a basic Pokemon. Looks like a Ranguru. You know, just try to get a few more cards here. This is a, a good strategy, of course. You, you're, you're trying to buy some additional time, make your opponent have that double turbo or the switching effect. You can charge up all those energies on the Lugia. And sure enough, I mean, if, if you get three more turns, you could make it happen. It's going to be a long three turns. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a short one turn. <laughs> yeah. We, we can see the hand. <laughs> Of course, the Lugia is not in the active spot, so uh, if it was uh, promoted in the active by way of one of those uh, gusting effects there for Grant, that would change a lot of this. Uh, you'd have all the pressure in the world placed on that Lugia, and retreating is not going to be an option. Isaiah trying to gain a little bit more wisdom off the top of the deck. Now passes back to Grant. Has that double turbo energy, so does have the retreat. Wow. Bosses orders up the Lugia. And won't be able to take the knockout, but applying a ton of pressure here. Yeah, that is exactly where you want to be. This is pretty solid Techno Blast. Uh, do you max Miracle here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fine, too. Just get some damage down and not have to worry about the switching. That way you don't need the fourth double turbo energy. Yep. Go ahead and crush, fuse, and strike. Copy the max Miracle on your other Mew VMAX. And uh, the damage isn't too relevant as long as you're able to two-shot this Pokemon. My wisdom yet again for Isaiah. Capture Energy shuffles away that card that was just put back on top. Grab another Lugia here, but all your energy attachments are just going by the wayside. Uh, this Lugia is most likely going to get knocked out. If it isn't, you have to retreat it. <laughs> right. So you lose the energies anyway. And then you got to play all those energies on a different Lugia and try again. Try and try again. You just have to <laughs> hope. All right, can, can another boss. Can this I mean, boss stick? If Grant didn't have yep. switching cards in his deck, I feel like this is a little different. But that is the card you need once more. The boss uh, is played here, and we're going to see Grant struggle to find 
at least that energy or the switching effect to move this Aerodactyl once more. Isaiah finding just enough to stay in this. I think we're going to see that last Kramomatic flip soon. There is the fourth double turbo, but you'd much rather use one of those switching effects now. Uh, and it is important to note uh, the escape rope is in the prize cards, so there's just the switch left, but that's the one you want. One. <laughs> you you yeah. want to leave the Lugia in the active spot and take the knockout. That is a great point. We're going to see that flip Ooh. does make up for some earlier misses. We also have that Silene in the deck, too, if we ever needed to recycle those. Smooth like butter. It, it's just been... This is what you play Aerodactyl V-Star in your deck for. Uh, if you want to have that 50-50 against Lugia for a lot of the games, uh, you get to this point. Yep. With oh. uh, the deck as thin as it is, actually going to go for that Silene. But if this is two tails, that feels awful. No <sighs> way. Five is not Grant's number. <laughs> Going to play the double turbo down. Draw into some more cards. Could potentially find that switch anyways. But this is going to just be the retreat now into the knockout on the Lugia V-Star, removing all those energies that Isaiah had attached and Grant down to just two prize cards. Thankfully pulled the escape rope from the prizes as well. Uh, I think this is where Isaiah is checking the resources left. Yeah, you got that Lugia in the Lost Zone. I think you just take a digital picture here uh, yep. with your mind, trying to get everything uh, understood for Game 3, and then we just <laughs> get into it. We'll see if there is another way to move this uh, Aerodactyl into the active spot, potentially uh, a Serena available to, to make that happen, as we have seen two bosses already played. Quick Ball discards that Aurora energy. Let's take another peek through the deck. It's just, <laughs> I don't, I, I do not want to see <laughs> all of these energy I, attachments. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's just so many cards in the deck that do nothing right now. Yeah, so that is the power of this this Aerodactyl V Star, and it's really put Isaiah in a difficult spot here. Going to go for the Marnie, and has that Radiant Charizard as well. This is big because uh, the Mew VMAX did use Technoblast last turn to take the knockout, which means with Grant having no double turbo energy left, we'll need to reset that attack, and you have to use one of your switcher escape rope for that. Right, and if you're using one of those uh, switching effects there, it means that you're not going to have it for that potential Serena on the Aerodactyl uh, V-Star. So we could see uh, the game slow down a little bit there, and maybe Grant has to end up passing the turn. This is an important find, though, for Isaiah. That Lugia V in the active spot was not really safe. There's still one power tablet left for Grant, so finds the V-Star off of that Marnie, and we could see it hit play. Yeah, we'll see if cards need to be found here with uh, Read the Wind or if the hit points are going to be valued. I could understand both at this spot. Isaiah does need to find a, a lot of energies to, to keep this rolling. Primate Wisdom finds an Ultra Ball. Not really what you want to see. There's no, no energy. energy. Yep, so we're just going to evolve and hope. Seems like a Rotom Phone in hand for Grant. That's going to be pretty big in trying to find the switching out here. Mm -hmm. And you get to shuffle the bottom, which that Escape Rope was there. Uh -uh. That's a deck full of switching cards, Pokemon, and Battle VIP Pass. <laughs> yeah, you know. You could draw into the wrong card, certainly. Well, with two switching effects there, oh. you feel very comfortable. Pow pad as well for that Silene. I feel even more comfortable now. Yep, those are all great cards to find. Grant can definitely try to uh, use this turn to uh, max potential here and go for that switching out. Of course, the switch makes a lot more sense than the, the rope. Well, you still have the option if uh, Silene's drawn, you can just put a double turbo back energy or double turbo energy back on top of the deck, draw that, attack with the benched Mew. Yep. We could also see the oh. If you do have to use the rope, then you can just use the boss's orders on the follow up and just take two uh, single prize knockouts to close the game. And it looks like that is going to be the decision for Isaiah to make here now. Little Manaphy, you did your job. Did it. <laughs> his job is to sit on the bench and look cute. I think he did his job. 
All right, <laughs> I, I guess. I'll, I'll go with you. That's fine. Oh, Rotom phone. I think putting a boss's orders on top of the deck. Yep. Lines up fairly well. This is a Pokemon that you can remove without uh, having to use that Techno Blast. So just needing the boss's orders to close out on one final single prize Pokemon would be enough. And Zia trying to figure out the exact list here going into game three now. Uh, it, it's really the only point you're playing it out. Like, you know there's going to be plenty of time, but you do not want to be surprised by anything, especially with the list kind of just out there like Grant's. Yeah, and uh, Isaiah does understand that. We're going to be moving on to game number three. Did we ever see the switch revealed at any point? I feel like that might I have been... I don't think so. Yeah, so that might be some information that uh, Isaiah hadn't seen yet, but I also would just assume that that was in a He knows deck. two ropes. Yes. So. so we'll see if that comes into play at any point. Honestly, the most important thing is that Isaiah won that coin flip to start this uh, top eight here, and he's got a great opportunity ahead of him with about 30 minutes uh, in this final game number three here to try to make it in top four of Orlando Regionals. Now we do have some updates uh, on our other top eight matches. Looks like Cal Connor beat John Ang. So in the Lugia mirror, Cal able to overcome and Andrew Hedrick beat Reagan. So it is all wow. up to Isaiah here for the <laughs> testing group. <laughs> these none of these players have gotten a Masters win for regionals, and if anyone's hungry for it, it's been Isaiah. Yeah, well, it's a good time to have the headphones on because you don't want to hear that news <laughs> and know that everybody's <laughs> waiting for you. You can also go ahead and add Nick Moffitt to that list, winning a two to zero. So we've got all hey. of our top four lined up, except for this beautiful matchup right here. Who's it going to be, Isaiah Braden or Grant Hayes? Joining two Lugia and a Lost Box in top four. And we do see a Mulligan from Grant here. So Isaiah going to start with at least one extra card. And by the way, uh, Grant's been Mulliganing, maybe a few more. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I guess it's, uh, it shouldn't exactly be familiar territory. There are 10 basic Pokemon in the deck. So you'd think that this wouldn't always happen, but sure enough, giving your opponent extra cards here on the biggest stage, it can't feel good. Yeah, Grant even added one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this isn't enough. We, we, need, we need an Aerodactyl in here. 30 minutes left to go for this top eight match. Plenty of time for a great back and forth game. Wow. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Grant, Grant's hand is incredible. This is going to be an absolute uh, fireworks show here. Let's go ahead and get the handshakes underway and see what these players have for us in game number three. So the loss vacuum in the prizes for Isaiah could be detrimental, but that's just because there's a card we haven't really talked about in this match, and that's Path to the Peak. There's, what, two copies in Grant's list. Just He's never seen them <laughs> yeah. throughout all these draws. Yeah, we keep looking around, and it's it, 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 ha it wasn't necessary in game number two. You already, you already established that uh, with the with the Aerodactyl V-Star, but it could be a way to slow down Isaiah here, and we do know that he does have the copies of the Lost Vacuum and the Pumpkaboo. So uh, there is counterplay, but you got to have the right cards at the right time. Yeah, you're down one. The Lost Vacuum's in the prize cards at the top, so you're not seeing that. Right. Capture Energy here. We'll let Isaiah get that info, though, and get most likely a Lugia V down on the bench. Pretty standard choice there. Got to get that summoning start down early. Also would hope to see some of those Archaeops to get into the discard pile. I'm not sure if the hand has that capability yet, but we have just only seen the the, uh, the capture energy. Isaiah dealing with some good information now. Nothing's too detrimental prized. Uh, you got a boss and a lost vacuum. I think those are probably the biggest hurdles to try to overcome. Especially last game, if that Aerodactyl gets online, you need to rely on those boss's orders. Right. You need to be thinking aggressively to remove that Pokemon if uh, if you can, the, in, when, when it does get out before you. I don't think we're going to run into that situation here, however. Lugia V down. V-Star could come out as early as next turn, and 
then you can uh, definitely start accelerating all those energies and get rolling. Just a pass to Grant now, and we're gonna see mean? we're gonna see some fireworks for sure. Yep, uh, there is a double v, uh, battle VIP pass in this hand, along with the Ultra Ball. I think we might see ten cards. <laughs> <laughs> Now this Battle VIP Pass is going to grab an Aerodactyl V and Genesect V, most likely. That is the cards Grant has put to the front. And you just got to check the prizes. Like, you do not want to grab that Aerodactyl V when the V starts in the prize yeah, cards. Yeah, has been, has been fortunate to, to not see that prize over the course of this, uh, this match so far. Yeah, especially looking through the list, I don't think there's that Hisui and Heavy Ball. So really playing it by the skin of his teeth. Yeah, if you think about it, you kind of need it on the opening turns and finding the heavy ball in the right spot. I guess you do have the cream of Matic that could potentially help out, but that's that's a lot of luck to help you when you were unlucky. I'd rather just be lucky in the first place. I'd rather always be uh, lucky than unlucky, for sure. Again, just getting the correct counts needed. Ops for just two Genesect V, and yeah, look at that hand. Battle VIP Pass, Ultra Ball, Rotom Phone, Cramomatic. Yep, the full setup should be available here. The triple Genesect, double Mew, and the Air Dactyl to go along with it. Play this hand down fairly low. And get to draw a few more cards here. Try to set up for having that switch energy Air Dactyl V Star ready to go on the follow up. Big Cramomatic. Heads. All right. Do you just. Is there any reason, possibility you just grab the path and then save it? You can definitely go ahead and grab it for now. Uh, the, the, he's also considering the judge in this situation. You haven't used any Genesect V in this spot yet, so there's certainly an opportunity there to draw into the path or draw into uh, oh, a way to get that. Yeah. Again, it is a calculated risk to uh, Isaiah did not play anything from hand, so you have to assume most likely a supporter. Yeah. Uh, there's there's got to be something going on in, in that hand. You can't just have six energies every time. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I guess we have seen that <laughs> for some of our players. You were going to win anyways then. And so they're, they're, they're not meant to, to move on in the tournament. <laughs> Both players getting four cards from this judge. But Grant is going to be getting quite a few more. Uh, Fusion Strike system allowing him to draw... Insane amounts. Yep, going to be a little bit lower because of that Aerodactyl V, but that is well worth it at this stage, given what this Pokemon can do for you. We got the Poncho. Looking snazzy. Yep, there's also, I believe, a Quick Ball there to go along with this. Going to see if these cards can help out here. Maybe find a, uh, a card that you would rather discard. Like that Lost City. Ultra Ball discards Lost City and I believe Mew. And now we can grab that Aerodactyl V-Star, but that's something that's just sitting in your hand. It does look like that's what Grant is going to go for. Quick ball down as well. Go ahead and just fail this and uh, draw into a few more cards. If you are going to be holding one card, it's probably a good one to have is the, uh, the V-Star. Now, has already used one Fusion Strike system, so two more available for Grant. Four cards off the second one. Really needs to find that path to the peak. The judge has already occurred. There is no cards played for Isaiah in the discard pile. Does find the energy and the path. Insane combination of draws there for Grant. And you, you can't... Oh, it, it's awkward attaching this energy because uh, if... Isaiah does have a way out of the stadium. You just wasted an energy on the Aerodactyl, but other than that, you can't really thin this hand down. So, yeah, we're just going to see the paths of the peak and a pass of the turn. Hope it's good enough. Five cards for Isaiah trying to break out of this, even retreating to the Aerodactyl V. It says, uh, I am inevitable. Let's see what you've got. Does research. have a supporter in that research. Evolution incense as well. Is that an Archaeops in the hand, too? It is. This could be unreal if Isaiah is able to pull this off. 
has so many great cards off of the judge. Of course, you did mention that Lost Vacuum is in the prize card, so Pumpkaboo or the second copy of the Vacuum going to be crucial here. Another crucial moment, too, is there's only two Lugia V-Star on Isaiah's deck, so you can grab the V-Star, guarantee at least one Archaeops, but going here, second Archaeops saying, I'm going to probably need two to try to close out this yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, we saw how risky that was, too, is uh, if your opponent does see one Archaeops, you're just a, a boss double turbo Mew, Mew VMAX away from losing your entire engine. Going to have to take some risks here. Is there... Yeah, no, okay. I was about to say, is there any avenue to Marnie, the Aerodactyl, back to the bottom of the deck? But you need to see as many cards as possible and get those Archaeops in the discard. Seven cards for Isaiah here. Is there a way to bump the Evolution path? Evolution Incense and an Ultra Ball to start things off. you got to be kidding me. Ball. This is it. That's Evolution Incense finds <laughs> the Lugia V-Star. Quick Ball or Ultra Ball will be able to find that Pumpkaboo. We know it's in the deck. Wow. That will be able to Pumpkin Pit the path to the peak. Discard that right away, and we're going to see this Aerodactyl 4 not. <laughs> you know, for good measure, you could just knock it out, too, <laughs> to, to feel pretty good about yourself. Tempest Dive would line up so well with that there. And uh, Isaiah is just going to make sure everything's there. We do see the Pumpkaboo there with the Pumpkin Pit ability. What a hand off of that Judge Path. Insane. So many energies in the hands, though. So getting to this point, I guess that feels a little bit bad, but I, I, I feel pretty good that uh, we're going to see some Archeops down. There is that Pumpkaboo. Checking to make sure. Yeah, I still have some energies that I can attack with this turn. Summoning Star. Now both Archeops. In play. This is not what Grant wanted to see here. Did everything right. Had the Pokemon ready to go. Even promoted in the active. Holding the evolution. Says, I just need you to miss one time. And Isaiah was not having it. Going to go ahead and get those energies accelerated onto the Lugia. Even has the V-Guard energy for a little bit of protection here. Is going to be taking a big two-price knockout. Eyeing down maybe those two powerful colorless energies. That'd be three total, 280 damage from Tempest Dive. Yep, you start to wonder about the following turn, and you already see uh, Leafy Camo Poncho on one of those Mew Vs. If that's the Pokemon that gets attacking, you're not worried about that big charm. You do still have that Lost Vacuum, so with three powerful energies, you're just going to be the belt away from another huge knockout and really just starting to clean this game up. Isaiah playing the capture energy, setting up the Uvital for next turn, and you have another pivot in this Luminion yet again. This works out so well here. We'll give V-Star not having it. Cesarodactyl, you've done too much to me in game number two. And we're going to go ahead and get you uh, right out the door. Yeah, close the door there, Isaiah. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're just back to the good old uh, Mew versus Lugia game. And sure enough, the first uh, Ultra Ball discard. <laughs> That's uh, pretty understandable there for Grants. And this game is certainly not over by any means just yet. Plenty of uh, playback here. But when you do stare down that V-Guard energy and you've gone for this defensive strategy, you know that it's going to be uh, a lot of back and forth in this situation. So we see the Oracorio just going to say, you know what? I'm going to try to make it as uh, uh, as much of a two-shot battle as I can. Yeah, uh, it is pretty helpful in the math, at least for the way Isaiah has planned things out. Just a choice belt would be able to take a knockout on a Mew VMAX, so it would require the fourth powerful colorless energy. And if that big charm is found on that benched Mew V, then maybe we can think about kind of keeping it in play. There's a, definitely uh, a route there. We are going to see the power tablet played down uh, just drawing some additional cards. Finally going to be using Fusion Strike <laughs> System for six. That probably feels good. I, I don't know. I, I think Grant's probably not feeling the <laughs> you best. Think, you right think you'd rather have Ancient Star? <laughs> yeah, me too. But uh, you got to look on the bright side of things here. Mew VMAX is going to be active and ready to go here. Looking for a lot. Well, still able to have two Fusion Strike Systems available to Grant. 
And now you have a hand of, what, two, three cards. Now you're going to draw three more. Two more power tablets needed to take the knockout. Oh, three, I believe. I think he played one at the beginning of the turn. Yeah, so we need three more because the Oh, the V-Guard, that's right. It's going to have to take every single one in the deck. There is no choice belt uh, in this list. A very defensive line. So we'll see if Grant and thinks that it's worth trying to go for here. Going to thin down a little more. Expect to see that Mew VMAX follow up. The double turbo energy also in hand. And I believe a Kramomatic says, I got all three power tablets there. <laughs> Can I find them at the right time? Just one more Genesect available as well. So this judge going to need to put a lot of work in to try to find these power tablets. And even if you do take the knockout, you're still not really winning the game. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's a, there's a Amazing Rare Evitals that's waiting to greet you. And that's, that's not where you want to be. You're, you're not hiding from anyone in the active spot with the poncho. I see you. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> we'll see what four cards are in store for Grant. Any way to thin down the hand or uh, raw draw into those power tablets would be perfect. Four cards for both players, but definitely going to matter more on Grant's side. Ooh, that's so good. Power Tablet and Kramomatic. He's going to go for it. Oh, he's uh, holding on to the Genesect, trying to see. <gasps> what? <laughs> Finds the Power Tablet. If we see another five, I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> this is huge. Oh, this is a big flip. He, oh, got he it! found it. Unreal. Power tablet added to the hand. Not one, not two, not three. Yeah, this isn't Miami, but it's, it's still going to work <laughs> out just fine. Four power tablet in one turn for Grant to take the knockout on the Lugia V-Star here. Yeah, go ahead and flex on him. Show every single power tablet to get the job done. Insane. So much damage from this Mew VMAX, and it's all or nothing at this point. Fantastic knockout there, using every resource to the best of its ability. And Isaiah, I'm going to bring up that amazing Ray Evitzal. Amazing destruction lines up so beautifully here. And we know Isaiah has the energy required. Uh, I believe the double turbo was in the hand that got shuffled back in. Uh, and still no real Aurora energy being used. Yeah, I think we've seen six energies played so far out of the potential, what, 16. So should have plenty of energies to follow up here. Taking a look through. There's three you need. <laughs> I like those. And which one do I want to close out with? Is, is there not the double turbo? That would make this a little more difficult. So I uh, think we were going to see just the single... Primal Turbo right now. There must not be an energy already in the hand. So Isaiah's going to rethink the position and maybe try to play some more cards. We'll see. And maybe just needed to reflect and see if that energy was around. So the game plan is kind of laid out for Isaiah. You can take the knockout here, go down to one prize. That means you just need to take a knockout on that Oracorio to finish things off, and pretty much every Pokemon you have in your deck can do that. Get them, Pumpkin. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe. I said pretty <laughs> much every Pokemon. It's your time to shine. Oh, we're going to count out the rest of these energies. Yeah, we do not see the uh, the double turbo yet, so just seeing the three on there maybe thinks that, I mean, it makes me think that it's, it's already in hand. in hand. Yeah. I would sure hope so, or else this sequencing is kind of scary. Yep, yeah, just gonna just go with the, the three. One. Good card. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it is waiting in the hand there. Evolution Incense, going to thin down a little more. Not exactly needing that Archaeops, but uh, it is important to make sure that you have as many resources available as possible. Get those percentages just a little bit higher. Isaiah really keeping his hand close to the chest, not really giving us any sort of information here. We're going to have a talk about that afterwards. <laughs> uh, you upset it. You upset Dad. 
I'm sure Dadner is watching at home. There is the double turbo. Stoutlin on the bench, and I don't think there's any supporter scene in hand, so we're just going to see the amazing destruction. Yeah, just the amazing <laughs> destruction. Oh, Boss's orders is still <laughs> left in the prize cards. That was the easy way for Isaiah to close it out. Yep. Well, even in a matchup where he avoided uh, the Aerodactyl, well, at least when he saw the Aerodactyl, he, he, he made this as difficult as possible for Grant having to play so many cards and get down to just like five or six left to close things out here. So uh, always taking the long road. Well, there is the big charm on the Mew VMAX. Uh, could have maybe put it on the Oricorio to survive something like an amazing shot, but that's pretty much it. Uh, Luminiana would still take the knockout due to weakness. And now this Mew will take the knockout, and he'll be able to Isaiah. Is there any gas left in the tank? Well, we saw him counting those special energies, so certainly has a game plan for those. Use that heat fire energy and has those two Auroras remaining. I think the speed lightning. Might be floating around in there too. Not too sure about that one, but definitely some plays left. Stoutland V even is a huge Pokemon with that uh, wild tackle. Could get the job done on a lot of these Pokemon here. It's pretty wild. It's a pretty tackle. <laughs> Quick ball discards the judge. So Grant was thinking about it, trying to disrupt a little bit. Path to the Peak would also be a, a pretty good card to get down. Shuts off Luminion, uh, being able to search for something like that, Boss's Orders. Always good to think about those potential options. Way to slow down your opponent in this situation. They've got one prize card remaining. Of course, you got that big charm on your Mew VMAX, so plenty of hit points in the active spot. You're moving the only Pokemon that truly does uh, one-shot you in the active position currently. Now you're really just hoping to avoid gust effects. But you can't be thinking like that, because if you are, you're already uh, grabbing your, your top eight prizes. <laughs> First fusion strike system for Grant here. Draws four cards. Let's see a Roxanne in the hand. Oh, that could have been what Grant was trying to go for. Roxanne's a little bit better than Judge right now. Well, you got to count how many cards are left in your deck at this point because you could deck yourself. Nah, nah. <laughs> there are pretty bad ways to go out <laughs> on stream. And that is one of them. So, <laughs> yes, we will count. Five in the deck. And does not want to play that Forest Sealstone down. Understands that. You might need every single one of those cards, basically representing a turn at this point. And again, Grant is going to have to have three more attacks to really close out this game. Uh, taking the knockout on the Uvital, and that's only one prize. So you're still going to need to try to take a knockout on that Stoutland or Luminion. Yep. Looking through the discard pile, not sure if we've seen cards like that Pow pad just yet, so that is an it's in the prizes. Oh, that is a that is a card we would look for then. Uh, Silene is another card that we could uh, look for for additional resources back into the deck. But uh, yeah, gotta look out for uh, what can come on the other side for Isaiah now, as this Pokemon surely is to fall soon. <laughs> we got a judge shuffle because uh, the deck is so small. <laughs> Have someone impartial. Uh, shuffling it. It was a Roxanne, not a judge. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing, guys? Path to the Peak is found now for Grant, though, so if there's any game where Path to the Peak is going to try to close it out, it's going to be this one. You might as well try. You can avoid the second Luminion V trying to help out. Going to just see if playing down some additional resources makes sense. You're not drawing any more cards. You played the path. Hey, we can still get one card. I mean, yeah, we've got a, we've got V Star available, but uh, don't need that just yet. We'll see what Isaiah has. Oh, oh Raiko, no. so <laughs> right big there off the top. Speed Lightning and Double two Auroras. He has it. That is so big. Has the retreat. Gonna go ahead and promote that Raiko and remove Oracorio from play. 
closing out here. Just looking for the official result, and there it is. <laughs> panned out a little too soon there, but <laughs> what a play. Having that Raikou off the top of the deck, an amazing shot, sealing it up. That big charm, if it went to the Oracorio, we could have bought another turn. Maybe makes a difference there, but it's not going to matter now. Isaiah is going to be the sole competitor of the testing group moving on into the top four and uh, has a lot of work ahead of him as he has removed one of the uh, the non Alugia players from the yep. tournament now, but <laughs> we'll see what the rest of the bracket has for them. Yeah, it is now three Lugia and one Lost Box left in this tournament. And if you're 